Hi friends, if you like my videos, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. Hi friends, my name is Farindra. So in this video, I am going to explain you about the structure of immunoglobulins. So if you see here, normally these immunoglobulins are known as tetramers. So why it is named as tetramers? Because it consists of two heavy chains and two light chains. So if you see here, this is one heavy chain and this is second heavy chain. So two heavy chains and one light chain and another light chain, two light chains. So two heavy chains and two light chains. So two plus two, four. Hence, these immunoglobulins are called as tetramers okay and next these immunoglobulins are y-shaped as it is a y-shaped it is said to be as gamma globulins and normally uh, there are five types of these immunoglobulins and the five types of immunoglobulins are IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD and IgE and uh, properties I will explain to you about I will explain, I will explain to you later about the properties of these types of immunoglobulins and if you see in the case of the structure normally each of the heavy chain uh, will get binded with disulfide linkage bond if you see here this is for, uh, first light chain sorry first heavy chain and this another heavy chain right both of these heavy chains has been linked with inter and there are also uh, if you see here normally i have explained you about inter disulfide linkage bond right and there also there are intra chain disulfide linkage if you see here this inter disulfide linkage is present between heavy chains right between hence it is said to be as inter intra means if you see here in the outside region both these heavy chains and light chains consist of intra disulfide linkage bond all of these are intra disulfide linkage bonds and normally if you see here i mentioned here ch 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 and vh in the same way cl vl cl vl right and what are this ch means constant heavy normally if you see here uh, this consists of uh, this both of the ends consists of groups if you see here this consists of amino group okay this end consists of amino group and this ends consists of carboxyl group so uh, the disulfide link uh, sorry the yeah the disulfide linkage bond which is exposed towards uh, carboxyl group are said to be as constant heavy chain constant heavy chain or as constant heavy bond okay and next uh, variable heavy vh if you see here when this uh, when this disulfide linkage bond will be exposed towards amino group then it is said to be as vh okay that's nothing but variable heavy in the same way constant light if you see this constant light when these are exposed towards carboxyl group both of these are carboxyl end and these both are amino end and when this constant uh, light chain or constant light bond will expose it towards carboxyl group so here are the carboxyl groups both of these are carboxyl groups so like this uh, when these bonds will expose it towards carboxyl groups then it is said to be then they are said to be as constant light and when they are exposed towards amino group and those are said to be as variable light bonds okay so this is about the structure of the immunoglobulin and one more important thing which you have to remember is so if you see here uh, this is the structure of the immunoglobulin basically right and normally this uh, structure of the immunoglobulin has been divided into two parts uh, where this upper part is said to be as FAB end and this lower part is said to be as FC end so what is FAB end fragment antigen binding and FC is fragment crystallizable so what is meant by this FAB and FC end so normally if you see here FAB, FAB is, end is nothing but the part where the antigen binds up so the part where the antigen binds up is said to be as FAB end and normally when the antigen will be received uh, received by the immune system then what happens is that immune system will get activated and start releasing these immunoglobulins I mean antibodies so when these antibodies will get released then what happens the particular antigen will get binded over with a particular immunoglobulin so in which part that antigen will get binded over at the region of FAB end this will get binded over so this end is said to be as FAB end coming to the FC end fragment crystallizable so why it is named as fragment crystallizable end because uh, it is named as crystallizable because it has been crystallized on the on the membrane of the plasma cell so normally plasma cell has a capacity to produce these antibodies right and normally these antibodies will be present at the surface of the membrane surface of the membrane so uh, how it is eject how it is present at the surface of the membrane by an attachment right and that attachment uh, or as that crystallized is formed by this fc end this fc end will be inserted or else will be attached towards the plasma membrane so hence it is named as fragment crystallizable it is crystallized at the cell membrane okay cell membrane region so what are the important points which you have to remember these are tetramers h2l2 because it consists of two heavy chains and two light chains and it is y-shaped hence it is said to be as 
gamma globulins and next a uh, gamma day that's nothing but in the same way you have to remember a uh, gamma day that's nothing but types of antibodies which has been produced so here if you see here igg iga igm igd ige are the type of antibodies right or as are the type of immunoglobulins and so if you see here uh, next it consists of interchain disulfide linkages interchain a uh, interchain is nothing but inter in between heavy chains in between two heavy chains inter disulfide linkages and next intra chain disulfide linkages are nothing but which are present outside the uh, which mainly helps in the balancing of these heavy chains so uh, all of these are the all of these are the intra chain disulfide linkages which i explained to you before and the type of this intra chain disulfide linkages are constant heavy variable heavy constant light and variable light disul uh, disulfide linkage bonds okay and normally it consists of fav and fc and just now i explained to you and pap yeah i forgot to say about this this if you see here this papen papen is the enzyme which mainly helps in the division of this uh, identical division of this fab and fc end so what is meant by this papen uh, papen is a cysteine protease enzyme normally you can find this papen enzyme in papaya in papaya you can find this most of this papaya enzyme okay so what is the main function of the papen enzyme it mainly helps in identical identify uh, identical division of this fab and fc end of the immunoglobulin so the types of immunoglobulins i have said you that there are uh, totally five types of immunoglobulins iga igg iga igm igd and ige right so uh, the proper the main properties of igg are it is a most abundant uh, you know most abundant immunoglobulin which can you find in the immune system and uh, the carbohydrate content is very much low and this cannot crosses the placenta it doesn't cross placenta whereas if you see in the case of iga and normally you can find this iga in the secretions like if for example if you see in the case of saliva and tears you can find this iga antibodies more okay coming to this igm uh, it is the largest largest immunoglobulin which you can find in the total immune system okay and normally it is the first antibody to produce the infection so coming to the igd normally this igd is present at the surface of the b cell and normally uh, you know how the b cells will be formed right normally b cells will be formed from the t from the you know uh, for which normally these b cells will be extracted from the spleen and when the chemical signals will be received from the helper cell t helper cell this b cell will get converted to the plasma cell okay so this uh, in this way this igd uh, are present in the b cells and coming to the ige it is a uh, normally you can see this ige antibodies in the allergic conditions and uh, normally i have explained you about type the type 1 hypersensitivity right and you can you can know more about this ig antibodies in the type 1 hypersensitivity so in this way uh, each of the antibody or, or else each of the immunoglobulins will get differentiated within their properties okay so this is about the structure of the immunoglobulins and for the proper notes on this structure of the immunoglobulins and the properties more properties on these uh, types of immunoglobulins do message in the whatsapp group and the invite link of the whatsapp group will be given in the description box so people who who like this video please share it to your friends and if you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment section or else you can also ask in the whatsapp group also thank you